God message for you today. The farmer's patience, a model for believers. In the agrarian society of James' time, farming was a familiar and relatable occupation. The image of a farmer waiting for the rains and the subsequent harvest would have resonated deeply with his audience. Farming requires a unique blend of diligence and patience. A farmer must work the soil, plant the seeds, and then wait, often through long and uncertain periods, for the rains to come and the crops to grow. This waiting is not passive, but is marked by hope and expectation. The farmer knows that the growth and eventual harvest are beyond his control, reliant on factors like the weather, which only God can provide. Similarly, James calls Christians to adopt this posture of patience as they await the Lord's return. Just as the farmer cannot hasten the arrival of the rains or the growth of the crops, believers cannot hasten the coming of Christ. It is a process that requires trust in God's timing and faithfulness. The modern struggle with waiting. However, waiting can be one of the most challenging aspects of the Christian life. In today's world, our impatience is often evident, particularly in our interactions with technology. Computer scientist Ramesh Sitraman's research on the Internet usage highlights just how impatient we have become. His study found that we are willing to wait an average of only two seconds for an online video to load. After five seconds, the abandonment rate is about 25%, and after 10 seconds, half of the users desert their efforts. This impatience is not limited to the Internet, but permeates many aspects of our lives. We want everything fast. Food, communication, transportation, and even spiritual growth. This impatience can be a significant hurdle in our spiritual journey. When prayers seem unanswered or when we face prolonged suffering, we may be tempted to abandon our faith or seek shortcuts. Yet James' exhortation to be patient is a reminder that spiritual growth and God's promises often require time. The waiting period is not wasted, but is a time of preparation and growth. The Temptation to Forsake Jesus James acknowledges the reality that waiting, especially under difficult circumstances, can lead to discouragement. The early Christians to whom James wrote were facing persecution and hardship. The delay in Christ's return could easily have led them to doubt or even forsake their faith. Today, we face similar temptations. The world is filled with pain, suffering, injustice, and uncertainty, and in such an environment, it can be easy to lose sight of God's promises. Yet James encourages believers not to abandon their faith. He uses the example of the farmer who waits patiently for the autumn and spring rains and for the land to yield its valuable crop. Just as the farmer knows that the harvest will come in due time, so should we trust that Christ will return and bring justice and peace, keeping watch and remaining faithful. In Matthew 24:42, Jesus urges his followers to keep watch because they do not know the day or hour of his return. This call to vigilance is echoed in the parable of the talents. Matthew 
25 to 1430, where the faithful servants are those who actively use what their master has entrusted to them, even in his absence. This means that our waiting should not be passive but active. We are called to live out his character and ways, embodying virtues such as compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience as outlined in Colossians 3.12. Waiting for Christ's return is not about sitting idly by, but about engaging in the work of the kingdom. It's about loving our neighbors, standing up for justice, and spreading the good news of Jesus. As we wait, we should also be growing in our relationship with God, deepening our faith, and allowing the Holy Spirit to transform us more into the likeness of Christ. The Promise of Shalom One of the most beautiful promises in Scripture is that Christ will return to right every wrong and bring shalom, peace. The Hebrew word shalom goes beyond just the absence of conflict. It refers to a state of wholeness, completeness, and harmony with God, others, and creation. This is the ultimate hope for which Christians wait, the restoration of all things. This promise of shalom is especially comforting in a world filled with brokenness. When we are confronted with the harsh realities of life, whether it be personal suffering, social injustice, or global crises, we can find solace in the knowledge that these are not the final word. Jesus' return will usher in a new era where God's peace reigns supreme. Practical patience, living in the in-between, but what does it look like to live with this kind of patience in our daily lives? How do we maintain hope and faith in the midst of prolonged waiting, or when the world around us seems to be falling apart? Firstly, we must recognize that patience is a fruit of the Spirit. Galatians 5.20-23 this means that it is not something we can muster up on our own, but is produced in us as we walk by the Spirit. Spending time in prayer, reading scripture, and engaging in community with other believers are essential practices that help us remain connected to God and allow His Spirit to work in us. Secondly, we need to reframe our perspective on waiting. Instead of seeing it as a waste of time or a period of inactivity, we should view it as a season of growth and preparation. Just as the farmer's crops grow in the unseen places beneath the soil before they sprout, so too does God often work in the hidden areas of our lives during times of waiting. These periods can refine our character, deepen our faith, and prepare us for the future. Thirdly, we must keep our eyes fixed on the promise of Christ's return. The Bible is filled with reminders of the hope that awaits us, and meditating on these promises can help sustain us during difficult times. Scriptures like Romans 8.18, which says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us, remind us that what we are waiting for is worth the wait. Finally, we should actively seek to live out the values of God's kingdom in our present circumstances. While we wait for Christ's return, we are called to be his ambassadors on earth, reflecting his love and justice to the world around us. This might involve serving others, advocating for justice, or simply being a source of encouragement and hope 
to those around us. Conclusion, a prayerful posture of waiting. In conclusion, waiting is an inevitable part of the Christian life. Whether we are waiting for answers to prayer, for relief from suffering or for Christ's return, we are called to do so with patience, faith, and hope. The world may be dark and filled with pain, suffering, and uncertainty, but we can take comfort in the fact that God is with us in the waiting, working all things for our good and His glory. Let us therefore wait for the Lord with a prayerful heart, saying, Jesus, I wait for you. Though the world is dark and filled with pain, suffering, injustice, and uncertainty, I'll wait for you. Oh, I don't know the day or the time. I'll wait for you. As we wait, may we be found faithful, living out his character and ways, and trusting that he will come again to bring shalom, perfect peace and wholeness to our broken world. And when he does, we will find that the wait was worth it, for the joy and glory that await us will far surpass any momentary troubles we have endured. Until that day, let us encourage one another with these words and continue to persevere, knowing that our hope in Christ is secure and certain. Dear child of God, please share this message with your loved one. God bless you.